But will any of this be enough? Last week, British scientists announced we had just 10 years left to halt the inexorable rise in greenhouse gases or almost certainly face dangerous levels of global warming. Our emails showed that some of Britain's scientists are beginning to think about what was, until recently, unthinkable. Geoengineering, schemes that manipulate the world's weather, oceans and atmosphere to keep us cool. In 1991, a massive volcanic eruption lowered the Earth's temperature by half a degree. For two years, sulphurous gases it spewed out blocked some of the sun's rays from hitting the Earth. So, some scientists propose taking a pointer from nature and spraying billions of tonnes of sulphur gases high into the atmosphere, or putting sulphur in jet fuel and letting commercial air traffic do that job for us. Or what about cloud brightening, a scheme to lace the skies with salt crystals pumped from a flotilla of boats on the world's oceans. The crystals would encourage clouds to form and reflect the sun's rays back into space. A trial of one geoengineering scheme showed tinkering with the planet can have unintended consequences. Pouring iron into the Southern Ocean was supposed to stimulate the growth of plankton that would absorb carbon dioxide, but it ended up fertilising other organisms, which put carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. There will certainly be risks associated with most of these techniques, and in particular their unintended consequences. And, and we don't yet know what those are for all the methods that have been proposed. And we really need to do some serious research on that and to have people thinking about what might possibly go wrong so that we can research them, understand them, find out how big they are, and then hopefully we can balance the risks of doing some of these things against the risks of doing nothing. One idea Professor Shepard thinks could work is carbon dioxide scrubbers artificial trees that actively suck carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. But this would have to be done on a massive scale. You'd need millions of the machines to actually make a difference, and they'd take years to remove significant amounts of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. For sheer ambition, what about the plan to put a trillion mirrors into 100,000 square miles of space? They'd reflect the sun's rays away from the Earth, but the plan comes with a planet-sized price tag. And like all geoengineering schemes, it might not even work. Mm -hmm.